Hello everyone, Annihilating Darkness here. Today's theme is mimicry. I worship editing. No, I mean I really worship editing. I worship editing as an art form in and of itself. I revere editing above everything else in video production. I just love how editing can thread together otherworldly experiences. I love that crisp snap snap of satisfaction in scenes that crackle, pop, and fizz with life and energy. I love the stories which can result from editing, and I delight to see how editors translate auditory sensations into a visual language. So today, I want to show you why editing is my current obsession. But I think my descriptions fail to do editing justice. To truly understand why I have fallen in love with this medium, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you about my experience. I want to tell you why I am so addicted to editing. And we're going to be looking at editing through the lens of anime music videos and Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Counter-Strike music videos. So let's start. To begin with, what is editing? For the purposes of this video, I would say editing is about making something new, chiefly video, from what already exists. But what does that even mean? Well, what I mean is taking the ideas or the visuals from a game, a show, or an event in real life, and combining it into a story. When I say I worship editing, an editor's job is not to film or to direct. An editor's job is to make what you already have into something meaningful. What you have is already set. The challenge is to find something extraordinary out of it. Personally, that's probably the sentiment I relate to most. I am an editor first and foremost. That's how I started. I didn't have a camera in the beginning, and in a way, it was a process of efficiency. One part of my journey of becoming a YouTuber was stopping me, so I simply moved on to the next. So I learned editing and post-processing before I learned to film. But that's not what this story is about, because I think it was a few years ago when I happened upon anime music videos that opened up this whole new realm. It showed me that editing was so much more than making something look nice. It was about telling a story. But what is an anime music video? Well, an anime music video, or an AMV, is a video usually synced up to music that uses scenes from manga and anime. AMVs are relatively small and are still up and coming with the rise of popularity in anime and manga. But notably, I believe AMVs represent the zenith of editing, constantly pushing editing to new heights and shattering boundaries in the field. Why? This is due to the idea that everyone has access to the same footage. The only thing that differentiates you is editing, and it is the ultimate test of how well you can meld scenes together. The beauty herein also lies in the expertise, honed through hundreds of hours of practice and dedication of the editors to be able to portray all these different stories just through editing. How? Well, through montage theory. Because film is very different to other mediums, as a movie is not just one image, it is a collection of them in sequence. One video of someone clapping doesn't mean much by itself, but match cut that with several explosions and we're creating a powerful link between the two scenes. The power of a video is not that of any single image, but when they are played in sequence. I mean, I have this vivid memory of this meme criticizing Naruto's fight scenes for the quality of the animation. Just pause it and, my gosh, what did they do to the pain? However, I remember my brother telling me that video wasn't about the single images. It was the entire sequence that mattered, and I really, seriously considered that. The philosophical depth, before I promptly burst out laughing upon re-watching the fight scene between Pain and Naruto. This video on screen now is actually by Zombie Mesh. The full video is in the description below. It's great. I advise watching it, and it represents my thoughts entirely. 
but the point still stands. Playing images that are not individually outstanding and by themselves are even distorted in sequence can create this sleek style of animation, allowing the movement to feel more seamless and natural in some cases. Not so much this one, because both the stills and the video were poorly animated, which can be put down to how the anime creators had to adapt the colossal manga Naruto, and as a result, animation suffered at some points. I understand that. The power of video that I mentioned is created through editing, the post-production, the thing which many people disregard because it's lost in the video production pipeline, but editing can tell these amazing stories with endless possibilities. Though I digress, as what is it about AMVs which make them so achingly beautiful? You see, anime music videos evoke nostalgia. To make an AMV requires in-depth knowledge of the anime you are using. You need to know which scenes are significant to the story that really stood out not only on a visual level, but were impactful emotionally. Because anime music videos allow people to relive the anime and all our memories with it. They allow us to relive the tears we shed with stories which were so representative of our struggles. And the iridescent gleam of adolescence through fantasy worlds. However, also to live through new stories made by the editors themselves. How exactly are AMVs made though? Well, the visuals reinforce the story which the music is telling. On the surface level, it's about syncing the video to the audio. Everything that you do should correspond to the beat. The sounds that happen. So whenever there is a change in the music, the video should also change. Cuts, dynamic movement, some major event, we want that to occur on the beat. However, it's important to note you can't do that throughout the entire song, owing to how it would quickly get repetitive and bland. In fact, I make a point of changing up the pace by deliberately not syncing the actions to the same part of the music and to try using different effects. But when I'm editing, I also like to listen to the character of the music, whether the notes sound hollow and resonant or full and rich, and I choose video and effects which suit the tone. I'll just listen to the music by itself, imagining how the sound would look, what it would symbolize. For example, when I hear something that sounds like it's quiet, I might have a wide shot of the scene from far above to give the impression of distance and scale, or something close up might be a train rushing towards the screen. So what I do as an AMV editor is to translate each of these sounds into some kind of action which makes sense. I listen to the music and I let it guide me. But how does that work in action? Let's analyze this short clip from White Dex, one of my favorite AMV editors. Let me just play you a bit of one of his AMVs. I'll put all the videos that I mentioned in this in the description below, so feel free to check them out. First up, the thing that sticks out to me most is we have chromatic aberration. There's a distinct separation between the reds, greens, and blues, especially in the background. For this scene and throughout this AMV, I've got some really stylistic color correction with overexposed highlights and the background is blurred out. We also have a very nicely keyframed scale animation which feels natural and has a swaying motion as if slightly drunk. A subtle point, but I think it really adds to the tone this video was going for. But the more important question is why? Well, White Dex is translating the song, and he does an excellent job at that. The song he uses sounds really dreamy, it has this kind of muffled vibe to the soundtrack, and I think the background blur really helps accentuate that. Everything from the color correction with the overexposed highlights to the chromatic aberration is done with purposeful intent to draw out how dreamy and euphoric 
the soundtrack sounds. And all of it contributes to a greater narrative that White Dex AMV has woven himself. Sure, the original anime, A Silent Voice, is already a romance genre manga and anime, but this is a much more distilled version. I'd argue from how different it looks to the original to how White Dex has sequenced the clips that he has made something brand new that also pays tribute to the anime and promotes it for the creators. And that's about the first three seconds. That's dedication right there. Okay, continue. I just have to say that this really looks really nice. I've got a Star Wars style feathered mask transition right here. It's also combined with a flash of white overexposing the entire video. Again, to contribute to that ethereal look and feeling, as if in disbelief at a happy revelation or at the thought of young love. You'll also notice that we have a soft pulsating zoom in accordance to the music. Now here, each of the steps was synced to the music. And I also have to say that the color changes to black and white every time a step hits the ground is really cleverly done, as it is very dreamlike, highlighting the main character and perhaps how important this love is to him. And I also had to mention this transition because of how smooth it is. It just seamlessly brings the viewer into the next clip through similarities between the two. This is a match cut because it feels continuous and like it should happen. Now this part just feels so smooth in how well put together it is. In each of these clips, White Dex cuts on the action and synced the cuts to the beat. We also have a scaling animation, and this isn't just regular scaling. Look how dynamically it reacts to what is happening on screen, as well as to the flute or rec recorder notes. That is purely masterful. The very best of AMV editors can weave meaning and a story into their edit, and this is what I mean. White Dex is a stellar example in this AMV, as it has a happy, lopsided feeling, as in how the edit has very bright and lurid colors, painting this wonderful story that viewers can interpret themselves. Which kind of brings me to my next point, which is that AMVs also have the potential to bring out new stories. You'll see many examples of this from AMVs which make up relationships that never happened in the original anime, crossing over series that never met. The thing is with AMVs is there are endless possibilities. It is up to you and your imagination and how acquainted you are with editing and your skill to what you create. Now, I want to look at some wonderful AMV creators, which I have a deep admiration for. I want to start off by looking at Kazcon, and I'm warning you in, in advance that there will be flashing lights for the next 5 or so minutes. Now Kazcon, where do I start? Well his AMVs are an eerie blend of psychedelic colours, coalescing into each other in disturbing yet visually arresting compositions. He manages to make the Monogatari series seem terrifying, and although I myself have not watched the Monogatari series, I'm pretty sure horror to such a degree never existed in the original anime. And through his vast editing experience, he was able to make something so much darker and altering the original anime to represent other themes. And yes, in his AMV Witch Trip, he does include scenes which are sexual in nature, but sexual attraction and relationships are a part of life, and as human beings, I think we just need to come to terms with it. Also, his, videos, his video isn't even about sex. Sure, we can point to one element in the video and be like, this is about sex. Nevertheless, looking at, at it as a whole, I think you'll find that this video is more about the dangers of addiction and being deceived by false appearances. 
But I think more than that, what I really love about Kaz Kon's style is how distinct his video editing is. How he is not afraid to confront the viewer with jarring truths, akin to his jarring style of editing, so far from the norm. He has his own color style in how he blends and distorts colors in unique ways, and his editing style is something so different. And I think that's the key word, because up until this point, which I had found his AMV witch trip, I would never consider something as warped and distorted as this to be beautiful. Yet it is. I think it is Kazcon which has kindled my love for such edits and a love for horror style in beats. And, and in a similar vein, I also want to recognize Oliver George. I apologize if I said your name wrong. For his wonderful AMV into the lab. Now, what makes Lolliger George so peculiar? Well, Lolliger George's sense of time is unrivaled. Time feels like it is fluid in his AMVs, flowing backwards and forwards effortlessly to the music, slowing down to a crawl before ramping upwards at a moment's notice. Just look at this one clip from one of his AMVs, Ghost Audition. takes the time to watch to match every movement to a sound. Lolga George uses these effects throughout his body of work, but most notably in Into the Labyrinth through the recurrence of confronting close-ups of people turning around and moving with a considered and graceful slowness. Why? Well, it's unnerving for one, but it also communicates a clear idea that people are watching, everyone is watching, as well as being visually true. Olga George is also behind one of the most disturbing AMVs I have seen to date. Gehirn Strume. I apologize if I said that wrong. This AMV, wow. Although I personally would not listen to this as part of my video playlist, because of how jarring both the editing and the music is, the experience is something singularly unique. Lolliger George paints a canvas of disquiet, ignoring all standard video conventions via flickering images and unorthodox framing. His videos make even Kazcons look tame in comparison, assaulting a viewer's eyes with a fuselade of visual information, and it revels in the ensuing confusion. His editing calls distinctly to technical glitches and distortions, or the discordant whine of television static. The idea that something sinister lurks on the periphery of your vision. Instead, we are left with this savage and bloody truth beyond innocent and youthful experiences, conveyed through human features distorted out of proportion. This is the stuff of nightmares. Amazingly, he creates dreadful unease even through Lucky Star and the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, contrasting them with grotesque scenes of unbridled gore and mutilation. What I did notice is that he especially favours jittering and unnatural movements, which matches the inhuman nature of this AMV. Both Kazcon and Lolica George create something so different from the original anime they used that I certainly couldn't have imagined watching them by themselves. However, the methods which they employ are entirely disparate and evoke different emotions which is what I really love about these two. Okay, now White Dex. Anything by White Dex, as I said earlier, is really well edited, especially his Monogatari AMV, F Haters. If you didn't guess by the title, this video is graphic. I mean, if you watched Monogatari, you would know, but it's very well edited, like amazingly. What makes this substantially better is how the video matches the character of the audio because the song has a 
rebellious and defiant feel. This manifests itself in the visuals through displays of strength, but also by the defiant and uncaring scenes of Karen Araragi. Like Kazkon and Lolga George, White Dex also uses Monogatari for his AMVs, which brings up the question of why Monogatari as an anime is used so often in AMVs. Well, short answer, because it has such a wide variety of angles and dynamic movements, which make it visually engaging. Hence, it's a perfect match for AMVs, because that's what you're looking for to use in an anime music video. I still haven't watched it, by the way. Anyway, I want to talk about Baka Opai. Now, Baka Opai is one of the most brilliant AMV editors, with his one of his sing signature AMVs, which I adore, being Anime's Got Talent. Why? Because it has a story, managing to tell a story of failure and triumph, despite having access only to the final product, the anime having to blend so many different stories and create a world that feels organic and reactive. This is an achievement that I cannot understate for how technically difficult this video was to pull off. This is an achievement that I cannot understate for how difficult technically this video was to pull off. And the amount of time Baka Opai put into rotoscoping blending and putting it together. Just wow. Another signature video of his, which I love the most out of all of his videos, is his AMV A Piece of Toast, which I love because of how the characters are synced to mouth the words of the song. The song choice is something that I really love because it was by Sean Wasabi, but that's another story entirely. The amount of creativity in this one video is remarkable. If you really delve into it, the song in the AMV, Pizza Rolls, is a remix of a ton of other music artists, including Skrillex, Zed, Mar Martin Solvig, Virtual Riot, Madion, and so many more. And the visuals are a remix of 40 different anime, with characters mouthing the words, the visuals reflecting the music. These are all done impeccably. This is one of the ultimate AMVs, and even if you aren't an anime fan or into ed editing in general, this is a feat that can still be recognized. Baka Opai by himself has won so many AMV contests, and every AMV he makes wins at least two or more awards. So as an AMV editor, Baka Opai is extremely talented. But I also have to say that he only makes about one video a year, dedicating an entire year to something like four minutes, showing the painstaking effort he goes to polish his AMVs for his audience. Side note, I just realized that I wouldn't be able to go through every AMV that I like, but I'll list the creators that are the most notable, and do note that the other AMVs are also, that I didn't mention, are also brilliant and I'll put them, I'll probably put them in a playlist in the description below. Now, continuing onwards, I just couldn't not include the AMV by Jia Ming Zuo. Mm mm, yeah, yeah, back in 2014. Just take a look at this first part. Keep doing your thing, let these boys keep slipping, man. I'm not into gymnastics, but I'm into flipping things. The full video is just aston astounding. Why do I like this AMV so much? Well, because not only is this synced exactly to the music, but all the anime used match the words of the song. For instance, this trumpet right here, that is from the song, itself translates into an actual trumpet. And this scene, for instance, the trumpet right here, that is from the song, itself translates into an actual trumpet. And this scene here, the scene selection was also skillfully done, as in this AMV, we have a lot of camera movement, orbiting around anime characters, accelerating through abstract planes, to soaring through the endless skies, creating this sense of space. 
it makes it feel as if anime has no boundaries. How the stories that anime creates are countless and everlasting. The thing is, this AMV barely has any complex editing, only consisting of cuts and crossfades. This AMV is a perfection of the basics. Everything about this is polished to perfection, which is what makes it stand out. Every movement that feels like it should be there in the music is filled by the visuals. Also, to think that this AMV was made back in 2014 just blows my mind that it's still one of the greatest AMVs, in my opinion, of all time, even in 2018. We also have this AMV Imagine, and oh my gosh, there's literally too much to talk about in this one video, because this AMV is overloaded with effects. How do I even describe this? Well, I'll try my best, but the best thing you can really do is to watch this video yourself. The video, this video in itself, is a reason for my obsession for with AMVs. In my opinion, what it represents is what anime means to people. This AMV is a testament to how far things have come. How anime itself has become this medium for everyone of all different genres and a place of our imaginations. I mean, BBSNYPUR carries this idea through how seamless and smooth the transitions are between each anime, creating one continuous experience, as if all the anime are connected as part of one whole. And the effects, wow. Not only does this AMV nail down all the basics, but it merges it with such a variety, wide variety of effects that convey the meaning of the music. And maybe you're starting to get why I like anime music videos. And on a broader level, editing. I revere the art of editing. I revere it. I think as a video maker, I have to. But this, this is why. Editing is this feeling of boundless power of joy to create, to make something out of nothing, to control exactly what you as the viewer see, what you hear, how you hear it, when you hear it. Everything I do is for the edit. I praise it because editing is something that is close to my heart. Because of the galaxy of possibilities that can eventuate from the art of editing. Pity though as I'm not even done going through anime music videos. But I thought you might want a little rest from analysis for a second. Okay, rest over. So let's continue. Now, <laughs> I would be remiss, remiss not to mention Nostromo. Nostromo is just so great. His sense for editing is unrivaled. Even back in 2008, as shown by his AMV Origa, he was amazing at editing. Look at this video. He made this in 2008. That would have been world class in, back in 2008. And I mean, it was even in 720p. I'm pretty sure most videos were 360p or less back then. But it's not even about that. I mean, his editing back then, even using versions of Adobe Premiere and After Effects, which were so much older, was ingenious. He outclasses me in every way as an editor. But I won't let that stop me. Don't worry. I'll keep improving to always bring you better content. And in terms of what he produces, out of everything I've mentioned, Nostromo makes AMVs which are so entirely divorced from their original series, so much so that it feels like a separate product entirely. Now, if only he could release a video. Only problem is he releases like one video a year and he hasn't released any AMVs these past three years. So, you know, <laughs> I rather prefer a more even balance between quality and quantity because I love new stuff and seeing new stuff often, but that's just me. On that note, I apologize for getting this video up so late. It's just that I was procrastinating on writing the script for this massive video, but thank you very much for your patience. Anyway, Nostromo's sense to seamlessly transition between anime sequences makes me feel so small. 
It is his videos which are inspiration for me to be better. Even with simple transitions, he is simply amazing. Now I really have to skip on to Real Quaga and his AMV's Krasnai Sulodka and Pencilhead, which are so which are also altered so drastically that they feel like something new. The reason is that Real Quaga is both an animator and an editor, explaining how he manages to synthesize something like this. It's awe inspiring. I mean, I don't think my mind can be blown any more times than in this video. Now, in his AMV pencil head, the real Quagga animated a lot of these scenes by hand, and one that really sticks out to me is the making of this bullet. This one 14 second segment is all done by hand. And in his own words, Real Quagga used three pencils, 232 sheets of paper, and likely a few months to complete just these 14 seconds. What? That idea is just so incomprehensible to me. And it explains why this one sequence is so beautiful, as he took something that only animation could do, taking advantage of the medium's strengths. He had to animate every single frame of this, and the amount of skill and willingness, will, willingness to push through displayed by that very action is superhuman. And yes, that is the power of animation, which is, to be clear, not editing. However, the amount of post-production that went into this project as a whole was insane. Just look at the making of video. He had to go through 10 stages to render the final hand-drawn appearance in After Effects, which just baffles me. These guys are professional. As in, these projects, and to be honest with you, every AMV I've mentioned in this video is world class, better than even what professionals who spend every day of their lives doing this. I know, I know, because I've watched thousands of hours of video and I have never come across anything like these, and that's why I'm sharing them with you. These are my favorite edits of all time. These videos illustrate the power of AMVs and editing, but also passion towards a hobby and an interest. But as for the time that goes into each, that takes anywhere near as long to do as these. I prioritize and always loan effects which can be used everywhere are different e each time and give the most impact for the least effort. Which is why I never do any kind of animation because it just takes too long in my opinion. However, I cannot deny that the potential results are indeed stunning. My ultimate goal is to be able to ex execute something of this quality every day consistently. And don't worry, I will get there. I promise you that. As I was saying, this video just feels so outlandish, like a dreamscape, celebrating anime as a whole, and I commend Real Quaga for this. I also want to take a moment to talk about Shin AMV and Gunther AMVs, especially their multi-editor project, AMV Fate Matrix. I love this AMV from the beginning, where the piano notes are matched to the keyboard strokes. However, the thing I love about this is the clear story, which is very difficult to implement. The idea that a little girl would be in charge of all the relationships in the world, just watching over everyone like a guardian angel is so creative. This video elicited a certain delight in me when I recognized that different anime embedded in the story. Personally, I believe that this enhances the enjoyment all the more. Because the anime fans watching this, they know the plot of this anime. Why is this important? Because anime fans can fully appreciate the creative ingenuity of Shin AMV and Gunther AMVs and how, together, they sculpted those individual stories to conform with their own. The idea that Taiga and Ryuji from Toradora are only together because someone was protecting them is humorous as that was blatantly not the case in the original anime, but at the same time, it would make sense. 
These interlocking story threads just mesh together so nicely. And you have to appreciate not only the technical skill of Shin AMV and Gunther AMVs, for, but their imaginations to etch out their own story. Mad Desire Studios is one of my favorite AMV creators. In particular, the AMV Prima Donna is one of my favorite. Named after the song that was made by Prima by Marina and the Diamonds. Something individual about Mad Desire Studios is that they use pop songs, which isn't something unheard of, but out of all the other AMVs that I've mentioned, none of them really do that for two reasons. The first of which is copyright, but I guess Mad Desire Studios especially pick songs which the creators don't mind too much, or they don't monetize their videos. And two, because it isolates them as rare and uncommon. The fact that Mad Desire Studios has seen so much success despite competing against so many other AMV creators for these pop songs is indicative of how seasoned they are. The editors on their projects are simply spectacular. Although, on the other hand, using pop songs might not have been such a bad idea, as although there is more competition, there is also more accessibility to a larger audience, especially one not particularly acquainted with anime, using it as a bridge to transition between the two, or appeal to those who love both. The fact that they use images of anime characters and a slew of motion graphics is something that I would never have thought of and creates a brand new style. Mad Desire Studios have a fixation with Mad Desire Studios have a fixation with typography design, and I think in that this aspect, they are masters. It makes their AMVs so different to others. They almost have the feeling of lyric videos, from the expressive and resourceful ways that they present text with the lyrics. When watching their videos, there was also something else which really stood out for me. And that is the multi-editor projects, or MEPs, which Mad Desire Studios does a lot of. So what would happen is 10 editors would work on one AMV collaboratively, and I love that idea. Every AMV that they turn out is completely different because of it. Specifically, towards their AMV Prima Donna, not only do the, their clips match the tone and feeling of the music, and the meaning of the lyrics, but they go as far as to design a magazine cover, all to place the characters in the setting. Now to finish off my favourite AMVs, I might as well bring in this Metal Gear Solid music video, although it isn't technically anime, but the skill on this music video just forced my hand. This was made in 2013. You can just see the prowess of this editor, being able to ex execute so many effects so easily. If you had told me that this was a professional video game trailer before I had watched it, I would have trusted you entirely. And I probably would have said that this is one of the best video game trailers I've ever seen. With the art of Hideo Kojima, combined with the masterful use of motion graphics, this music video astounds me. It looks like a professional video game trailer. In fact, it is better than the vast majority. Also, the song which serves as a background is not something that I would listen to usually, but with the way the visuals accentuate the music and are so aesthetically pleasing, the entire sequence is something to say. Now this transcends the boundary between amateur and professional and just becomes professional. What is so amazing about editing? Well, as you've seen, editing is the process of making new and exhilarating experiences, the skill and expertise that positively oozes out of editing and the eternal journey of improvement. AMVs embody this. That's why I love editing as an art form that facilitates the process of creation that brings music, music, words, 
and ideas to life and gives them strength. It's poetic how we can weave meaning into how we place a video and alter it, and that's what I love. Continuing onwards, I also want to say or introduce you to COD music videos. And I'm going to say COD music videos for the rest of the video, but really know that I'm actually referring to COD, CSGO, and Battlefield music videos. Look, I don't play COD, Battlefield, or CSGO. The closest that I experienced was Halo 1, 2, and 3. And although I have watched a lot of COD Zombies, because I highly appreciate the inventive inventiveness of that series, I don't know much about these games. Yet, I still thoroughly enjoy COD music videos. The question is why? How could you make a video game about war into a music video anyway? After all, the videos would look exactly the same, especially when you always had a gun in this heads up display in front of you, right? However, in hindsight, I can say that I was completely wrong. Despite using many of the same maps, each editor tells a remarkably different story through how they edit. I think the idea of um, COD music videos are fascinating. That people would think to tell stories through first person shooters, and that would grow into the community it is today. To me, COD music videos are a celebration of people coming together about something that they love. In this case, first person shooters and the skill and enjoyment that comes from that. But what is a COD music video? I want to show you a quick example. Can you believe that this was made within a video game? I certainly couldn't, because COD editing is a complex process. There are so many steps that I wasn't aware of. Collecting 3D data, compositing it, and post-processing. All of it contributes to this final product. I always had this idea that games were only the footage that you could see as a player. However, in games like CSGO, you can use and animate cameras to create cinematic movements and extremely slow motion. And COD music videos are also an exhibition of skill, as you'll see gameplay of players 360 no scoping each other, as well as wall bangs, as in getting a headshot by pure chance through destructible walls, and running risky playstyles to great success. These videos combine this passion for the game with music, making something that even I can appreciate, despite having little knowledge of military shooters. How does COD editing compare to AMVs though? Well COD, editing, well, COD editing shares so many similarities with anime music videos, especially in how they are edited. However, in COD edits, the shots are synced up with the beat in After Effects with the graph editor. But the same idea of linking dynamic movements to sounds still applies. Where do anime and COD editing differ? Personally, I'm not too familiar with COD and CSGO editing, but COD and Battlefield have a cinema mode where you can animate cameras to create cinematic shots, customized to how you wish. In anime, you can't rotate a camera or choose how to move it because the animation is already done. I'd say COD, Battlefield, and CSGO edits are mu much better in this aspect because they allow more versatility, but they're also much harder to get into and are more time consuming. Of course, this is overall because there are always outliers, as I have shown you before. CSGO takes it one step further as you can export scene data to C4D or Maya and animate cameras. That means even more control over everything in the environment. And that's how Fuse makes these fantasy environments, which never exist in game, with scintillating mushrooms 
and hazy clouds of mist. They are all added in post-production, and it's all a part of editing. Now, I want to tell you about my favorite CSGO and COD edits. So I think I'll start off with Cavalry. And this is probably the first COD edit that I really fell in love with. This one video was worked on by 20 editors, displaying each of their various and unique styles. Because every editor is experienced in different areas, giving this video more variety and it keeps it constantly fresh. It also means that each editor can really perfect their section as they can focus more on a smaller amount of content. And I think it turned out brilliantly. It feels like something of an abstract movie, connected only by a love for the game. I'll play just a second of it, so to give you a taste. Just look at how well the, the time remapping is synced to the music. I might as well analyze the inclusion of footage in real life, even though it isn't really part of the COD edit, but it's interesting that they did that. I will say that it's also really nicely done with some very smooth flip pads that I highly approve of. Now I'm going to move on to the next video, but I really have to say that Cavalry is really amazing. So onto the music, COD music video, Dow by RM Voluox, and this edit came straight out of left field. It's so good. This is a mastery of syncing. Like in this video, we have time remapping speed ramps and flashes of light and blurring to emphasize the power of each speed. Now this video is a favorite of mine, but I can understand that it might be a little too effect heavy for some. So RM Volulux manipulates time on a similar level to Lollica George, combining it with 3D camera movements of shots that are impossible to get in real life, which is the beauty of COD music videos. While doing more research on RM Volulux, I found that his style was very otherworldly, as seen by how often he takes a bird's eye view, as if looking on at the death and destruction in his cottage. 